G'day everyone, welcome to our lesson on net momentum. Net is another way of saying total or the sum of. So in a closed system, so a closed system might be a bunch of boxes moving towards each other like so, without any other influences on them. So no gravity, uh, no wind blowing, no random uh, pushes being given by any students who are interfering with the experiment. Just a closed system where we know uh, the velocity and mass of all the objects inside. So a closed system without outside interference. In a closed system like this, the net momentum or the total momentum will never change. That is one of the fundamental rules of the universe. And we can use that rule to work out the final velocity uh, if those objects do collide and stick together. So if you look at the system at one point in time and calculate the net momentum, and then look at the, at the system another point in time, even if the velocity of all the objects has changed, the net momentum will not have changed. Let's exploit uh, that phenomenon to solve a few questions relating to mass and velocity. So the first question, we have a slippery, slippery surface there. One box here of mass we'll say two kilograms, I'll write the mass there. One box here of mass one kilograms. And the velocity of this box is equal to three meters per second, taking positive velocity in that direction. And the velocity of the second box is negative four meters per second. So if we were to describe which direction these boxes are moving, positive velocity to the right, negative velocity to the left, there's going to be a collision somewhere there. So if we look at that situation, we'll say that system, that closed system, at a later point in time, if those boxes are sticky, say if they have some Velcro on them, they will actually stick together. So we'll have the two kilogram box there and the one kilogram box there, but stuck together, they make a full box with mass three kilograms. And what we want to work out, sorry, three kilograms, what we want to work out is what the final velocity of this big mass is because it will not have come to a stop. Well, I, I won't assume that for now, but let's suggest it won't have come to a stop. The net momentum can be worked out for this question here. So net momentum is equal to, and up here I have m1, v1, m2, v2, m3, v3. All this is saying is that this is the momentum of the first object, this is the momentum of the second object, the third object and so on, and you just have to add them all together. So in this case, the net momentum is equal to, well, m1 is two and v1 is three, plus m2 is equal to one and v2 is equal to negative four, so the velocity of the second object. So that comes to six minus four or two, and the units for momentum are kilograms times meters per second. The net momentum here is going to be the same as the net momentum here because it's a closed system. So I'll write that down. The net momentum here is equal to, and I'll draw an arrow just so we know where we get it from, two kilograms times meters per second. Let's use this bit of information to solve for the velocity. So since these boxes are stuck together, we can take them as a single object, mass three kilograms. So the momentum of this system is just equal to m1, which is three, sorry, times v1, which we don't know. But we do know that side of the equation. The total momentum is equal to two. So two equals three times V, two over three equals V, 
2 thirds of a meter per second is equal to the velocity of this block. Since we got a positive answer there, the block is going to be moving to the right like that. Let's look at a more complex question. So deleting all this. We have the same slippery surface, but in this case we have three boxes. That's a little bit big. I'll draw it up here. First box of mass one kilogram. Second box of mass two kilograms. And third box of mass five kilograms. The first box is moving with a velocity of 5 meters per second, the second with a velocity of 2 meters per second, and the third with a velocity of 1 meter per second. So V, V, V. Since the boxes back here are moving to the right faster than the box over here, there will be collisions between these boxes eventually. The order of the collisions I'll give to you, the first collision we see is between the second box and the third box. So box mass 2 and box mass are mass 5. And the third collision we see is when box 1 finally catches up and collides there. So I'll just make this a bit more realistic. They will have moved along something like that. And then the final triple will be somewhere over there. So you can see what's happening there. We want to figure out the velocity of these two boxes, this box, and these three boxes over here. So the first thing we need to state to ourselves is that the total momentum in all these three cases, since they are clo it's one closed system just moving through time, is going to be the same. So in this first case, the total momentum is equal to m1, 1, times v1, that's 5, plus m2, that's 2, times v2, that's 2, plus m3, that's 5, plus v1, that's equal to 5, plus 4, plus 5, or 14 kilograms times meters per second. So in this case, it's 14, and in this case it's 14. It's not going to change. So I'll write down what we're trying to figure out. Velocity there, velocity there, and velocity there. This one is easy. Since this box between this moment in time and this moment in time has not undergone a collision, the velocity won't have changed. There's no force acting on it at all. So the velocity of the mass one box here is still 5 meters per second. Let's use now the net momentum information to solve for the velocity of these two boxes which are stuck together there. So net momentum is given by 1 times 5 plus the mass of these two boxes, 7 times the mystery velocity. But we also know that the net momentum, uh, whilst being given by this formula here is also 14. We know that from the first question. So 14 is equal to 5 plus 7v. Take 5 from both sides, 9 is equal to 7v, and we get 9 divided by 7 meters per second is the velocity over here. 9 divided by 7. We'll leave that in fraction form. Finally, the third part we're supposed to solve, what is the velocity of these three boxes when they're stuck together? Well, we know the net momentum is equal to, what's the mass of these three stuck together? 5 plus 2, that's 7, plus 1, that's 8. So 8 times the velocity of this big mass. And we also know that the net momentum is 14. So 14 is equal to 8v. 
or 14 divided by 8 is equal to V and 14 over 8 is the same as 7 over 4 or 1.75 meters per second 1.75 meters per second so that's the end of the question let's check to see if our answers are sensible we said that these two boxes here are moving with velocity 9 divided by 7 9 divided by 7 is equal to 1.2857 now we'll just say 1.29 approximately 1.29 so think about the front box here. As this box slams into it, do you expect this box to speed up or slow down? Of course you'd expect it to speed up. So it goes from 1 meter a second to 1.29 meters per second. <clears throat> Whereas this box back here, the mass 2 kilograms, when it slams into the box in front, you expect just, just as if you drove your car into a car that was driving in front of you, you'd experience a deceleration. So you expect this box to go down in speed. It goes from 2 meters a second to 1.29. So this box speeds up and this box slows down. Finally, when you've got these two moving together at 1.29 meters per second or thereabouts, and you have this box slam into them from the, uh, behind, do you expect these boxes to speed up or slow down? Well, speed up. And it goes from 1.29 to 1.75. Whereas this box back here, you would expect to slow down because it's very light and it's like riding a bike into the back of a train. You would experience the deceleration. So you go from 5 metres a second to 1.75 metres per second. You can always use some intuition and some understanding of collisions to help you solve these questions. After you find the figures, you have to always make sure your answers are sensible. And you can do that by either checking your answers with sums, or I like to think to, my, think to myself, is this answer in the region uh, of numbers that I would expect to find it? Now we've covered momentum and net momentum. We'll be looking at impulse next.